I was flying from London to Rome with a layover in Amsterdam. I'd heard whispers about Schiphol's less than stellar reputation, but I'm an optimist. How bad could it be? Famous last words, right? Well, we are about to embark on a 12-hour stay at the Schiphol's airport. Buckle up and let's get into it. As I stepped off the plane, a sense of unease washed over me. My journey through Skip Hall was about to become a comedy of errors, a masterclass in how not to run an airport. My first challenge? Deciphering Ship Hall's infamous signage. Imagine a giant game of airport-themed Pictionary, except the drawings were done by a toddler hopped up on sugar. Arrows pointed in every direction, seemingly at random. Gates were labeled with cryptic codes that wouldn't have been out of place in a Dan Brown novel. Every time I thought I'd crack the code, a new sign would send me spiraling in the opposite direction. It was like trying to navigate a maze designed by M.C. Escher himself. After what felt like an eternity, I stumbled upon an information desk. Excuse me, I asked the attendant. Could you please tell me how to get to gate C12? He looked at me with an expression that could only be described as weary amusement. Now, I'm not one to generalize, but the staff at Ship Hall seemed to have taken a masterclass in apathy. They moved with the speed of a sloth on a coffee break, their faces etched with a look that suggested they'd rather be anywhere else. I tried asking for directions, hoping to avoid another signage showdown, but my attempts were met with shrugs, grunts, and the occasional dismissive wave. One particularly helpful gentleman simply pointed a finger in a vague direction and said, It's that way, I think. Ship Hall was a customer service wasteland. Just when I thought things couldn't get any worse, I encountered the mother of all queues. This wasn't your average run-of-the-mill line. This was a queue of epic proportions, a testament to Ship Hall's ability to turn even the simplest task into an endurance test. It snaked its way through the terminal, a monstrous beast of impatient travelers and overflowing luggage carts. People stood shoulder to shoulder, their faces a mixture of boredom and quiet desperation. I joined the back of the line, resigning myself to my fate. This was Ship Hall, after all. And in the world of Skip Hall, time moved differently. After what felt like an eternity, I finally reached the front of the security line. Now I've been through my fair share of airport security checks. I'm a pro at unpacking my laptop, removing my shoes, and assuming the position for the body scanner. But Ship Hall? Ship Hall took security theater to a whole new level. First, there was the sheer volume of security personnel. They were everywhere, clad in their official-looking uniforms and stern expressions. They barked orders like drill sergeants, herding us through the maze of metal detectors and X-ray machines. The metal detectors seemed to have a mind of their own, beeping erratically even when a fly buzzed by. The X-ray machines moved slower than a snail in molasses. It felt like trying to get through security faster than a Marvel superhero. After what felt like an eternity of unpacking, repacking, and being subjected to enough radiation to power a small city, I finally emerged from the security gauntlet. It was like a scene from Home Alone, but without the fun. But hey, at least I was one step closer to my gate. Or so I thought. Armed with my boarding pass and a renewed sense of determination, or maybe it was just caffeine withdrawal, I set off to find my gate. Now you'd think that finding a gate in an airport would be a relatively straightforward task. But this was Ship Hall, remember? Logic and common sense had no place here. The departure screens, when they weren't displaying cryptic error messages, seemed to delight in showing outdated information. Gates, 
changed faster than a chameleon in a rainbow factory. I wandered through the terminal, my sense of direction slowly abandoning me. As my departure time ticked closer, I started to panic. Just when I was about to give up all hope and book a one-way ticket back to reality, I spotted it. Gate C-12. It was tucked away in a remote corner of the terminal, hidden behind a construction zone and a family of pigeons having a heated debate over a discarded croissant. I practically sprinted towards it, my backpack bouncing against my back like a loyal but slightly annoying sidekick. This is the final boarding call for flight AZ-789 to Rome. I had made it, just barely. I stumbled through the gate, out of breath and feeling like I'd just run a marathon. I had survived Schiphol Airport, but just barely. Now, I'm not one to complain. Okay, maybe I am, a little. But my ship haul experience got me thinking about all the other airports I've had the pleasure of transiting through. Take Changi Airport in Singapore, for example. Changi is like the Disneyland of airports. It's clean, efficient, and they have a butterfly garden. Then there's Heathrow in London. Heathrow is massive, bustling, and always a bit chaotic. Ship haul, on the other hand, felt like it was actively trying to sabotage my journey. So, what is it about ship haul that makes it such a transit nightmare? Well, for starters, it's the sheer volume of passengers. Ship haul is one of the busiest airports in Europe, a major hub for international travel. But it often feels like they're trying to cram a jumbo jet's worth of people through a space designed for a hot air balloon. Then there's the layout. Ship Hall's terminal is a sprawling labyrinth of interconnected buildings, each with its own confusing network of corridors and gates. It's like they hired a team of architects who specialize in designing escape rooms. And let's not forget about the staff. Perhaps Ship Hall's biggest downfall is its own sense of self-importance. As a major international hub, it seems to have developed a bit of an ego. It's almost as if they're thinking, we're ship haul, you'll figure it out. Well, I'm here to tell you, ship haul, we're not all master navigators with an innate ability to decipher your cryptic signage. We're just weary travelers trying to get from point A to point B without having a complete meltdown. How about a little less hubris and a little more customer service? Invest in some decent signage. Until then, I'll be sticking to airports that don't require a degree in cryptography and a black belt in patience to navigate. I settled into my hard-won seat, feeling a sense of victory wash over me. I'd navigated the signage labyrinth, survived the security gauntlet, and even managed to find my gate with only minutes to spare. I was hot, sweaty, and my nerves were frayed. But I'd made it. But just as I was about to hit post on a particularly witty tweet about the airport's questionable design choices, a sound sent chills down my spine. It was a sound that could only mean one thing, gate change. And not just any gate change. A last minute, heart-stopping, sprint across the terminal gate change. Attention passengers for flight AZ-789 to Rome. Your gate has been changed to gate Z42. Panic set in. I grabbed my backpack, my boarding pass suddenly feeling as heavy as a lead weight in my hand. People around me were scrambling, their faces a mixture of confusion and concern. We were all in the same boat, adrift in a sea of changing gates and garbled announcements. We weaved through crowds, dodged luggage carts, and leaped over misplaced suitcases. It was like an airport-themed obstacle course designed by someone who clearly enjoyed watching people suffer. As I sprinted through the terminal, my backpack bouncing against my back, I couldn't help but think, this is it. 
This is how I miss my flight. All because of a rogue gate change and an airport with a penchant for chaos. After what felt like an eternity, but was probably only 10 minutes, ship hall time moves differently, remember? I arrived at gate Z42, panting and sweating. I stumbled through the gate, my legs feeling like jelly. To my immense relief, the gate agents were still there. But instead of being met with a welcoming smile or even a hint of empathy, I was greeted with a look of utter indifference. You just made it, one of the agents said, her voice flat and devoid of any emotion. I wanted to scream, to rant about the gate change, the confusing signage, the general lack of customer service. But I was too exhausted. I simply nodded weakly, handed over my boarding pass, and shuffled onto the plane. As the plane finally took off, leaving the chaos of Shiphall Airport behind, I couldn't shake the feeling that I had just survived some strange, surreal ordeal. It was like waking up from a bizarre dream, a fever dream fueled by confusing signage, indifferent staff, and a near-miss flight experience. I glanced around at my fellow passengers, many of whom were still catching their breath after the great skip hall gate change sprint. Were they also mentally composing scathing online reviews and vowing to never transit through ship hall again? I couldn't help but chuckle to myself. Out of all the airports in the world, ship hall had managed to stand out as the most uniquely frustrating, the most bafflingly inefficient. It was a master class in how not to run an airport. Now, I'll admit, I've developed a bit of a love-hate relationship with airports over the years. As a travel writer, I spend a good chunk of my life hopping from one airport to another, navigating the highs and lows of air travel with a mix of excitement and weary resignation. I've experienced the sleek efficiency of Changi Airport, the chaotic energy of Heathrow, and the quirky charm of small regional airports where the baggage claim is literally just someone handing you your suitcase through a window. Each airport has its own personality, its own set of quirks and challenges. But Ship Hall, oh Ship Hall, you hold a special place in my heart. Or perhaps it's just heartburn from all the stress eating I did while lost in your terminal. You've taught me the true meaning of patience, the importance of comfortable walking shoes, and the value of a good sense of humor when it comes to air travel. So, what did I learn from my ship hall adventure? Well, for starters, I learned that sometimes, no matter how well-traveled you are, no matter how prepared you think you are, airports can still find a way to surprise you, and not always in a good way. I learned that a sense of humor is essential when navigating the often absurd world of air travel. And I learned that sometimes the best way to deal with a stressful airport experience is to embrace the chaos, find the humor in the situation, and share your story with the world, or at least with your fellow travelers who are equally as bewildered as you are. So, if you ever find yourself transiting through Shiphall Airport, my advice to you is this, pack your patience, wear comfortable shoes, and for goodness sake, download a good map app. And if all else fails, just remember, you're not alone. We've all been there. We are the survivors of Ship Hall Airport. And someday, we'll look back on this experience and laugh, or maybe just cry a little.